Okay, now we're going to graph inequalities on the coordinate plane. So when we graph inequalities on the coordinate plane, a linear equation is the boundary. Let's use a better color. We have a solid line if the points on the line are included. Meaning, it has the equal to with it. So if it's a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to it, we're going to graph it with a solid line. It's a dashed line if the points on the line are not included. Think about when we had open and closed dots when we were graphing them on a number line. Okay, this would be like an open dot. Those guys don't have the equal to with them. All right, so when we graph it on the coordinate plane, is the boundary we're gonna decide is the boundary solid or dashed? We're gonna graph the line, and then we have to do some shading. So right here it says test a point not on the boundary. If the inequality is true, shade that region. If the inequality is false, shade the other region. I'm going to show you a trick here in just a second for it. Okay, so look at number one there. It says graph x minus 2y is less than 4. So, two things are going on there, right? First of all, do you remember what form that's in? Standard form, right? I got the x and the y on the same side, the constants by itself. If we were going to graph this guy in standard form, what would we use? Dang, Ferris Bueller's day off over here. Would I graph it by intercepts? Would I see where it crosses the x and the y axis? Yeah, I could do that. What's another way I could graph this guy? Matt? Yeah. Change it to y equals mx plus b. What do you guys want to do? What do you like better? Y equals mx plus b. So let's do it. Okay, so if I'm going to rearrange this guy, I'm going to move the x to the other side. So I have negative 2y is less than, I'm subtracting x, so I get negative x plus 4. Now what? Go for it, JJ. Divide everything by negative 2. Okay, and what do I have to remember to do when I divide by a negative and I have an inequality? Flip it. Flip it. Awesome. Thank you. So I have a negative 1 divided by a negative 2, so I get positive 1 half x. A positive 4 divided by a negative 2 gives me a negative 2. So when I rearranged this guy, I got y is greater than 1 half x minus 2. All right, now it has a boundary blank there. What that's saying is, is that guy solid or dashed? Dashed, right? He doesn't have the equal to with him, so we're going to have a dashed or a dotted line. Okay, so now let's graph that line. I'm going to start at negative 2. And my slope is 1 half. Rise over run. Up 1, right 2. Bless you. Remember, I'm doing a dashed line, so... Good morning. Thank you.
Okay, now, it said we had to shade a point. Okay, so we have to decide whether he's solid or dashed, but then we also have to shade something. Here at the top it said test a point not on the boundary. Well, what's an easy point to test that's not on my boundary right there? Zero, zero, zero right? So if I were going to plug zero, zero into this equation, and if I plug it into the original or this one, it doesn't matter as long as I've rearranged everything correctly. But if I plug zero, zero into this guy, I get zero minus two times zero, or zero is less than four. Is that true? Yes, so I want a shade to include that point. Now, here's my question for you, or my trick for you, I should say. If you have it in slope intercept form, So if you have it in slope intercept form, if it's a greater than or a greater than or equal to, you're going to shade above. I want things that are bigger than my line. Does that make sense? I want things that are bigger than my line, so I'm going to shade above. If it's a less than or a less than or equal to, I'm going to shade below. In that case, I want, would want things that are smaller than my line. Does that make sense? So you can test a point if you want to, or you can use the trick, as long as it's in slope intercept form, okay? Would that work over here? No, because we had divided by a negative and it switched it. Does that make sense? So it has to be in slope intercept form in order for you to use the trick to shape. Okay? All right, do you want to see how to do that on your graphing calculator? And yes, your calculator will shade for you. So, grab your calculator. Some of you, if you haven't graphed inequalities before, if you need a calculator, let me know. If you haven't graphed inequalities before and you have a skinny one like mine, a rechargeable one, then you, we can load an app called Inequals. And some of you with thicker ones might be able to do it too. So you're gonna push the apps button. It's right next to the alpha button. And you're going to load an app called Inequals. Right there it says number six on mine. Some of you, it might already be loaded. Okay? Push enter. All right. Now, it may not have gone to, gone to your white goals, but in case it did not, go hit Y equals right there, right below the screen. Okay. When you put them in your calculator, they have to be in slope intercept form. Okay? So this is the one that I want to put into the calculator. So I'm going to put 1 half x. You can just type it in as 1 divided by 2. x minus 2. Now, if you've never seen your calculator graph before, go push graph. The x is right next to the green alpha button. And that looks like what we graphed. Okay? Sorry for the glare. Lucy, just press alpha and then press the one that has the green X? Um, no, you don't have to. You can just push that the X T theta N button next to the alpha button. So you won't have to type in the X. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's right next to the green alpha button. If your graph doesn't look something like mine, push the zoom button and do a zoom six. Yeah. If you've got a funky window or it's zoomed out or it's off to the side, do a zoom six.
Now we, your calculator can actually shade for you. Okay, like I said, if you've got a funky window, say you see something on your graph that looks like this, it's like scooched over like that, you can do a zoom six, zoom six is standard, and it'll get you back to a 10 by 10 window. Okay, always. All right, now, we are going to make our calculator shade and tell us whether it's a dotted or a solid line, okay? So go back to that y equals, and I'm going to arrow all the way over to the left. Now, if you have a skinny rechargeable one like this, that will pop up right there. If not, we'll have to talk about how to change it. Okay? I will show you. All right, so you can change the color if you want. Let's see how this guy right here, he's now, I arrowed down and he's blinking on the equal sign. You can scroll through to change it to what we want, okay? There's a less than or equal to, there's a greater than, that's the one that I want. So now I'm gonna push enter, and as you notice, it has a dotted line with it and it's shading above it. That's what we want, a dotted line and to shade above it. Push okay. It changed it here, and now I'm going to push graph. Yours might look a little bit different, Amelia. Okay. If you didn't, if you scrolled over and you didn't get it to show up like that, if you scrolled over and these along the bottom popped up, is that what yours did, Amelia? You're going to hit the alpha button and then you put, I think it's alpha. Hold on, let me try it. Yes. You do alpha and then which one of the ones that you want. So this one we would do alpha and then window. And then when you push graph, you should see it shade above with a dotted line. You see that? Questions on that? Questions on making your calculator graph for you? Do you need to do that? No. Okay? On your homework and on your test, you're going to have to do it by hand. But if you're not sure of something, go ahead and calculator and do a chat with it. Okay? All right. Here we go. Questions on anything that we've done so far? All right, number two there says the SAT has two parts. A tutoring company advertises that it specializes in helping students who have a combined score of 900 or less. Write an inequality to describe the combined scores of new prospective clients. So as we know, there's two scores, right? There's a math score and there's a verbal score or your language score, right? Your English score and your math score. So, We need to write an equation, an inequality, to talk about that. How could we do that? Well, let's talk about if they have a math score. Let's give that a variable.
So if x is their math score, and y is their English score, what would my equation look like? Romy. Yeah. Okay, so if I were to graph this guy, what would my boundary be? Solid or dashed? Solid, right? All right, now they gave us a graph there and it doesn't have anything labeled, right? Can you get a negative score? No. So would it make sense to graph anything that has negative values on it? Probably not. So let's start at zero, zero. And I think if you go by hundreds, it works out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Okay, so let's graph this guy by intercepts. What if you score a zero on the math? What could you score on the English and get it still to 900, right? What if you scored a zero on the English? What could you score on the math and still get tutored? 900. And where should I shade? Below. Thank you for your patience today. Does a student with a verbal score of 480 and a math score of 410 fit the tutoring company's guidelines? Yeah, how could we tell? Add them, right? If you add them together, you get 890. You could also look at the graph. Okay, here's 480 on, oh wait, an English score of 480. So that's about right there. And a math score of 410 would be like right there. So it's in my shaded area on my graph. Sound good? Okay, questions on that? 
So you graph the line, you decide whether it's solid or dashed, and then you shade. Okay, dokie. The last thing we need to talk about today is graphing absolute values on the coordinate plane. All right, so if you notice that there, what do you know about absolute values? They do what? They make things positive, right? So if you think about this guy right here, y equals absolute value at x, so the absolute value of x is just a line that goes like this, okay? He has a slope of one and he goes through the origin. So this is the line y equals x. But then when I do the absolute value of it, I can't have things that are negative. So for my negative x values, they would become positive. So an absolute value on the coordinate plane gives me a V shape. Okay? It took all of these negative x values right here. If I plug negative 1 into that, negative 1 becomes a positive 1. Negative 2 becomes a positive 2. Does that make sense? So you'll see a V shape anytime you graph an absolute value. All right, now I'm going to use my calculator to show you some things. And in a minute, I will show you how to put the absolute value in. But I just want you to watch for right now. Okay, so when I throw that guy into my calculator, there's what happened. Okay, I graphed the absolute value of x. I'm going to call him our parent function. Now we're going to move things around. Okay? What do you think happens when I put in minus 3 inside that absolute value. It, go ahead, Romy. Romy says down. Anybody have any other predictions? JJ, what do you think? It switches to x plus 3. Switches to x plus 3. Those are all good guesses. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Okay, so I typed it in. We have x and we have the absolute value of x minus 3. So let's look at it. So there's my first graph. It moved it to the right. It did the opposite of what we sort of, you know, think it might do. So it moves it along my x-axis. Now, think about when we were doing the absolute or the number lines, right? And we started over at 51. Remember that problem where we started at 51 and we had to move it back to the origin? We had to move it back to zero? We subtracted 51, right? So what this guy does is he moves the graph to the right three units. So now our vertex, instead of at zero, zero, is at one, two, three, comma, zero. I still have my V shape. Think about what happens when I plug in zero. Zero minus three, so that's a negative three. The absolute value of negative three is positive three. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen when I add three? So here I subtracted three, I'm gonna add three. Matt. Yeah, it's going to move it to the left. Okay, let's look at that. Oops. Oh, no. Did I push a button? Hold on, I... No. Um...
Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, there you are, Colden. Sorry, guys. What was your question, Colden? The absolute value on the calculator? How do you find it? Yeah, I'll show you in just a minute. Yeah, I will show you how to put that, type the absolute value into your calculator in just a second, okay? Okay, so if I add three, it's gonna move the graph to the left three units. So my vertex is now at negative three zero. Okay, so that was inside the absolute value. What about if it's outside the absolute value? What do you think, Matt? It's gonna go up. There's the original, my parent function, and it did indeed move it up. So when I add three outside the absolute value, it moves the graph up three units. So my vertex is now at zero comma three. What about if I subtract three? Where's it gonna go? Down three. So that my vertex is at now zero, negative three. So we have a whole family of graphs. When you move something around like that, we call it a family of graphs. So my parent function is the original one with nothing happening to it. And then we moved it left and to the right and then we moved it up and down. The only other thing that can change, and this isn't on your notes, is that we can adjust that slope, okay? So we can make it fatter or skinnier by adding numbers out front. So say I give it a slope of two times the absolute value of x. Watch what happens there. So there's my original, my parent function. I adjusted the slope, okay? I made that V skinnier by making them a two. I could make it a negative two. Oops. So there's my parent function. A negative will flip it upside down, so it'll be an upside down V. Okay. All right, so let's look at this one and then we'll check it with your calculator and I'll show you how to type your absolute value in, okay? So we'll go down here to number four. It says graph y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x minus two. First of all, it asks for our boundary. Is this guy gonna be solid or dashed? Solid, right? And then it asks where the vertex is. Okay, well I don't have anything inside the absolute value, but I have a minus two. So I'm gonna start at the origin, and if it's outside, it's gonna move it down. So I'm gonna start at zero, zero, and I'm gonna go down two. So my vertex point is now at zero comma negative two. Is there a number out front of my absolute value? No, so I'm not going to affect my slope. So my slope is one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one in both directions.
Now, with absolute values, it gets a little trickier. I want you to think, you still think above the line, but do it in half at a time. So this guy is a greater than, so I want things that are above. I want above that line and above that line, so I want inside my V. Okay? All right, let's check that with our calculator. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna practice changing it to a greater than or equal to, and then we're gonna put the absolute value in. If you go to y equals, you can hit the math button. The math button is right below the green alpha button. There's all sorts of menus that pop up, but if you arrow one to the right to num, stands for number, the first one says abs, stands for absolute values. Some calculators it'll write out abs, some calculators it'll give you the absolute value bar. Okay, yours might say abs and that's okay. So now I'm gonna put X in right next to the green alpha button, arrow to the right, because I want out of the absolute value. If it says abs, you may have to close the parentheses. The parentheses is above the green, or the nine button, excuse me. And then minus two. All right, now if you do that, it's just going to give you the V shape. If you wanna see its shade, arrow over to the left the whole way, and we want this guy to be a greater than or equal to. And then push graph. How did you say greater than or equal to? Because I couldn't find that. Um, did you load the inequals app, JT? Yeah. Okay. Um, you might have to turn your camera on and show me your calculator because I don't know which calculator you have. Uh, I can see I four plus. O okay. Um, does your is yours rechargeable and skinny like mine? Okay. Go to the Y equals and arrow arrow over all the way to the left so it's blinking. There's a box around the Y one. Push enter. Did it pop up like that? You can change the color and the style? I can change the color and the line. Um, so it doesn't... It only says color and line. Okay, so it doesn't have like where you can change it there? Okay, go hit the apps button. It's right next to the... It's diagonal from the green alpha button. It says apps. And you're looking for one that says any quals on it. Do you have one that looks like that? Push enter there. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay, that it should work now. JJ. Uh, how do you put an inequality sign or not um, absolute value sign on there? Um, so you're in Y equals, right? Mm -hmm. Hit the math button, it's below the green alpha button. And then arrow one to the right where it says noom. And the top one will say abs. Okay, any other questions on graphing? Okay, now, what if you're not sure how to get it from your calculator onto your table, or onto your paper? Your calculator has a table function to it. It'll give you a t-table that you can scroll through. So if you do second, the blue second button, and then graph, see how it says table up there, it gives you a t-table of values. So you can accurately take it from your calculator onto your paper, and you can scroll through it. It goes forever because lines go forever. Okay? Second graph gives you the table. Okay, let's do one more. Number five, solid or dashed? Dashed. Dashed, perfect. I have an absolute value, I have a negative one inside the absolute value. Which way is it gonna go? It's 
going to move it to the right one. Okay, so if I go to the right one, and then the two outside the absolute value is going to move it up one. So I start at the origin, and I'm going to go right one and up two. There's my new vertex at one comma two. Does my slope change or is my slope one? There's no number out front, so it's one. So I'm gonna go up one and over one. Remember this guy is dashed. Now he's going to be shaded on the below them. I want less than, I want things that are lower than my line. So I want below both lines, so I'm going to shade to the outside. Okay, questions on all of that? Yes. Okay, let's look at your worksheet. Last page of your worksheet, last homework assignment for this chapter. Let's look at number one and number two, because those ones can tend to be a little bit more tricky. The first one says y is less than or equal to negative three. What do you know about y equals a number? Are they horizontal or vertical? Matt. Yeah. They're horizontal, awesome. So I have a horizontal line at negative three. Is it gonna be solid or dashed? Solid. And then I have a less than, so where am I going to shade? I want things that are smaller than my line. Below. Okay, number two. If y equals a number are horizontal lines, then x equals a number are vertical lines. Do I have a solid line or a dashed, 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 I can't talk. Dot, dashed, that word, line at positive two. Dashed. And now I want things, this one doesn't have above or below, but I want things that are bigger than two. To the left or to the right? To the right, we want things that are bigger than two. Okay, now for the rest of them, number three. If you graph it with intercepts, that's perfectly fine. Just be careful how you shade, okay? You can only use the above and below if it's in y equals mx plus b form. Um, same with number six. So you're going to decide whether it's solid or dashed, and then you're going to graph it and then shade it. Number eight and number nine are the only two with absolute values. Okay? This one's moving your absolute value down. This one has a negative, so he's going to be an upside down V. His slope is different, so he's going to be skinnier. You're going to move him to the left, and you're going to move him down. So your vertex should be somewhere down here in this quadrant. Okay. Number 10, yes, I do want you to write an inequality for number 10, and I want you to do 10, 11, and 12. I would suggest you do this guy by 
intercepts. So use the cover-up method when you graph that one, okay? If they don't buy any desktops, how many notebooks can they buy? If they don't buy any notebooks, how many desktops can they buy? Again, it's a little outdated because who really buys a desktop anymore, right? So that's your homework, okay? Um, any questions on any of that? Just um, one through twelve, right? Yep, one through twelve.